This is an excerpt from Part 61 Made Easy, or Private Pilot Test Prep, which is available at pilotinstitute.com. Okay, we have a student pilot certificate, we have a medical certificate, or maybe basic med, and then now we want to be a pilot. How is the private pilot training going to look like? You have to pass two different tests to become a private pilot. The first one is an aeronautical knowledge. This is what this course is getting, getting you ready to do. The next thing that you're going to have to do is a practical test. We call it a check ride, and we'll talk about that in a second. Most flight training programs for private pilots are going to be designed with three different sections. Now, this is not always true, but in most cases, from what I've seen, this is how they're designed. Pre-solo training. You're going to train to go for your first solo. And then pre-cross-country tra training. The next part after you do a bunch of solos is going to be to fly cross country. And then in the last section is basically going to be getting you ready for the exam, wrapping things up so you can go for your check ride. Let's talk about your written exam because this is what this course is all about. The written exam will test what we call the aeronautical knowledge and this is all highlighted in part 61 105. When I built this course, I looked at part 61105 and I made sure that everything was covered. Make sure that I teach you everything that is required by the regulation. This course right here was designed to meet all the requirements of part 61105 but does not meet the requirement for part 141. I've talked about this before. I am not a 141 school, so I am not allowed to provide training under part 141. So this does not qualify towards a 141 requirement for ground school. In that case, you need to take the ground school from your part 141 school in order to get the credit. By the time we're done with this, you are going to need an endorsement from an instructor saying that you meet all the requirements of part 61105. Now, I have decided to make this available to you as a separate service in order for you to get the endorsement from me if you pass all of the courses that I have available, or five of them, and also if you can show me that you are proficient, okay? I'm going to be signing your license, I'm going to be giving you an endorsement that says this person has been trained and this person is ready to take their test. I'm putting my name on it and I'm putting my license number on it, so I want to make sure that you are providing me the proof that you can do this. Now this course is going to be a separate course and you'll be able to enroll in it and it will be a test in it that you have to take and prove to me that you can pass and, um, and are worthy in a way of getting my sign off for this course. Now training for the written exam can be done in a lot of different ways. You can do it online like you're doing now with this course. You can do it in a classroom setting. Uh, some flight schools offer this as a service or you can do it one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor which is going to be fairly expensive. So your written exam is going to be 60 questions very similar to the ones that you'll find in this course as you practice and it's going to be take two hours to complete. Well you have two hours to complete it, you don't have to. Most cases you'll be done sooner than that and then you have to get at least 70% to pass. I hope that you get over 90% by the time you're done with this course because you will be ready for it. The rec if you don't pass with a 70%, you have to get recurrent training from an instructor. Now, I will not be able to provide you this recurrent training because this will have to be done in person. More than likely, you'll do this with your fly instructor and then he's going to sign you off in order to go for uh, you test again. I have to sign off the actual paper version. This is why I can't do it online. Now, with that being said, you will not fail this exam. There's no possible way when you're done with this course that you will be failing this exam. Now you will be scheduling this exam with a testing center. There's two of them out there, CATS or laser grade. It depends on what is available in your area. And obviously there's going to be an additional cost with this test, which is going to be approximately $150. That's how much it was last time I checked. Now when should you do the training for this? Well, it should be done at the same time as you do your training, your flight training. You can do it before if you want, but some of the things I talk about will be a lot better if you have a little bit of experience in the aircraft. Now what also you should do is you should pass your test, your written test, after you've done your first solo. I think it's going to help you. This is a good time to schedule it. You don't want to wait until the last minute, which some people do, but you have to remember one thing is that your uh, written exam is going to be valid for 24 calendar months. It's going to be valid for two years. 
and then after this, if you haven't taken your check ride, then you have to take the exam again. Now, with that being said, if I give you the endorsement, actually whoever gives you the endorsement, that endorsement is good forever. There is no expiration on the endorsement. So when I sign you off, then you will be able to take the test. And then if you need to take it again, you don't need another endorsement. You can go ahead and take it again without uh, having to see an instructor. Now, the written exam is one thing. Then you have your practical test. Now, your practical test is going to be completed by one of two or three people. Either it's going to be an FAA inspector, either it's going to be a designated pilot examiner, a DPE, or it's going to be a check pilot if you are at a Part 141 self-examining flight school. There's going to be an additional fee, we talked about this before for the DPE, $400 to $800 depending on where you are. And your practical test, your check ride, is going to be divided into two different portions, the oral exam and the flight proficiency test. Regardless of the test, the oral or the flight proficiency test, your check pilot is going to use the ACS, the Airman Certification Standard, in order to test you. We've talked about the ACS before. Make sure that you're familiar with this document. You should have had it downloaded by now, but make sure that you take a look at what's inside the ACS because that's what you're going to be tested on. Now, you may hear another word called PTS. The PTS was the old ACS. Uh, the practical test standard, it's the same idea, just a different name. I want to go back to the oral exam and the flight proficiency check. Your oral exam is going to be you sitting in the room with the DPE or with the examiner and that person is going to ask you a question. And if you answer correctly, you move on to the next question. If you don't, then you can fail the check ride right there and then have to get recurrent training and then come back. Same thing for the flight. Once you're done with the oral, the, the DPE is going to say, or the check pilot is going to say, okay, let's go to the aircraft now. And then you get to the aircraft and there's a few things you need to do in the aircraft. And if you don't do them correctly, same thing. The flight will be terminated. You come back to land and then you have to get recurrent training and then you have to go for the check ride again with that same examiner. In order to finish your license, you're going to need to submit a few pieces of paperwork. One, you're going to need to fill out an 8710 through IACRA, that's the name of the form. You're going to need to have your written test report. This is what hopefully I will help you get. You're going to have to have a medical certificate, a student pilot certificate, and then your instructor is going to give you a bunch of endorsements in your logbook. And also you're going to make sure that you have your logbook with all the, the hours that are required, at least the minimum number of hours. Make sure that you have all of them. Sometimes you can be short on maybe night takeoff and landings, for example, you have to make sure you meet all the requirements. Now, your instructor should be checking on that, but the last thing that you want is to go for your check ride and the check pilots open your logbook and looks at it and says, well, you don't meet the requirement, and boom, here goes $600 for nothing, okay? So be careful with this. If you are part of a 141 uh, ground school or 141 school, you will need a graduation certificate that will be issued by the school before you go for your check ride. And when you're done, you're done. You're a private pilot. You pass your written exam, you pass the oral, you pass the flight, and you will be issued a temporary pilot certificate. That temporary pilot certificate is a little piece of paper and it's gonna have the uh, examiner's signature. It's usually typed on a typewriter and, um, and then you keep that. It's good for 120 days. And then in the meantime, you should be getting your card in the mail, uh, just like the one in the picture. You're a pilot. Congratulations, you made it.